Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again, and in this new series, we're going to take a look at what urban areas around the United States would look like with key freeways removed. We're going to kick things off in Miami, Florida. Miami is the sixth largest metro in the country with a population of 6.4 million. The metro extends 100 miles along the southeast Florida coast, but for this video we will be concentrating on the city of Miami, which has a population of 440,000. Our target for removal, Interstate 95 south of its junction with Interstate 395 and State Road 836. The freeway down to US-1 is about 3 miles long and ends 2 miles southwest of downtown Miami. This is a stub freeway. It constrains downtown on its west side. It has several ugly interchanges that are poor uses of land, and it's already roughly duplicated by Miami's heavy rail metro. Here we're looking at the Rickenbacker Causeway, which leads to Key Biscayne. That has a dedicated interchange will remove that will make room for some new development. As we travel the path of Interstate 95 North, I'm going to show you three hypothetical versions of what could be done with the land I-95 currently occupies. Those versions are a series of mostly undeveloped parks and urban forests, mostly development with pockets of green space, and somewhere in between. In the lower left corner, you'll notice Miami's Metro heading for its next stop in downtown, with a heavier development option, additional stops for that may be desirable. On the south end here, the neighborhood was originally and still is suburban, so I've limited development options to medium density, but this would also make for a couple of nice linear parks, which would be about a mile long and roughly 200 feet wide. Closer to mid-city is the current site of an interchange that took out three square city blocks, We'll reclaim those with various amounts of development and green space. At the Miami River, the interstate forms a fairly ridiculous four-level interchange. Ground level here is all parking lots that consume about six square blocks of the city. East of that are the tendrils of a bizarre series of on and off ramps that allow traffic from the interstate to interface with Miami Avenue and Brickell Avenue in downtown. The longest of those extends two-thirds of a mile. Here we come across the Miami Metro once again. This is elevated through most of the city. We also get hints of Miami's weird little elevated rubber-tired people mover, which would shuttle transit throughout downtown from the Metro. Downtown arguably does not have a park that is not on the shore. At the bottom of the screen is Bayfront Park, which consumes 32 acres. Mostly dedicating the freeway area to green space would create a 13-acre park roughly a block wide and five blocks long, breaking up development nicely. If not, we would free up two valuable downtown blocks for high-rise development. Here we see a metro train heading into the complex that also houses Brightline's Miami station for easy access to intercity trips to the north. The metro also connects to Miami International Airport five miles away. One benefit of removing the freeway would be reconnecting downtown with the riverfront, which is starting to develop on both sides of the river west of downtown. That could be accomplished effectively with both development and green space, but is obviously badly hindered by the freeway. Looking north at the second half of the interstate route in the foreground, the freeway is half a block wide between two frontage roads, which is probably better suited to development. Beyond that, space opens up as the freeway widens into the interchange with Interstate 395, which by the way is currently being expanded. This area has great opportunities for redevelopment. Unfortunately, the injustices committed against the historically black Overtown area likely don't have a hope of being rectified without removing and carefully developing the entire interchange, 
which took out a large chunk of the community and split it into four disconnected sectors. Looking back toward the south, we do have a chance to better unify the city on an east-west axis through development, a series of parks, or a bit of both. So do you like any of these options or do you think the freeway should stay in place? Let me know in the comments. There are more of these videos coming in the future, but they'll probably be for shorter freeway segments. If you'd like to see this treatment for a short urban freeway segment in your area, leave a comment. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big beautiful freeway.